sift disk over there by adding another layer of camera, like because there could be just multiple layers of cameras to protect everyone down the line. Oh yeah. Um, because the last person almost never gets arrested. The, oh, yeah. the person all the way in the back who's like, I'm just in my car, man. Like, uh, they, they Multiple cameras are so valuable, too. Yes. Because, like, they can take one camera. They can take two cameras. They're not going to take 16 cameras, you know? Right. I wouldn't do SIV disk with one camera. I mean, I have before, but it doesn't work out as well. Yeah. Um, it's easier to stop. And yeah. Jen makes a really great point. I mean, having a person at home base is not only something that someone Who's further? Who wants to be further from, removed from the action? Can do. It's actually an extraordinarily valuable position because, especially if you know that many people are going to be going to jail, preparing for that, making sure that all of your people have bail money, um, decide whether or not that they they are going to have identification on them, whether or not they will be giving their information when they are arrested, um, and making sure that that your contact person at your home base knows the family or friend that you should contact to make sure that your friend gets out of jail and that you have enough bail money to bail them out so they still will not get their name if they choose to. That's awesome. May I ask your name? My name's Becca. Becca. Mm -hmm. We're just fine. All the things that <laughs> Becca just said, like, if you're going to do some civ diss, talk to Becca after, <laughs> no, after, after this or whenever you see her because some some activists make a sheet of like, in case I'm arrested, I have a buddy who has my key and can get into my car and can, uh, I have copies of um, you know my I prepared my my rent or whatever. You make plans like, cause no one wants to get arrested, but it's so much better to be in jail knowing that like, okay, I got a team of people like working on stuff. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not just sitting here just Rotting. Yeah, wondering am I ever gonna get a phone call? Are they gonna let me see a lawyer? Will I get to eat tonight? And, so And like you said before, when you committed your you know, your previous act of civil disobedience, you took the time to reflect on it and see what worked and what didn't. And especially if you're planning a larger action like say crossing the line at the School of the Americas or if you're planning on going to jail for a larger period of time, um, making sure you know why you're committing civil disobedience and intentionally doing all of those things so that it looks good and it's also in line with your values is really helpful. I love that, Becca. Yeah, absolutely. The, the more you can prepare, the better. And you can always improve it next time. So it's always worth it to talk about how, how did this go? Like, um, what, what can I improve for next time? Definitely. Is there an act of... I'm getting the impression, but I could be way off, that there's like an act of civil disobedience that people are looking to participate in. Is there one that's coming up, or some like smoke off, or what? Yeah, do? April 20th, we tend to have a rally, and it's been very small in the past because the normal chapter is only two years old, so we're still kind of babies. But, but I mean, on like campus? Two years. We are, yeah, on campus. Um, but I mean, 2012 is a whole new year, and we have a big, broad base, and if there's enough people, I mean, we have openly consumed on the big lawn every year that we've had that rally, and we haven't had a problem, but there's also only been like 20 people, and we've had a permit to be there, so like, the police aren't of a concern. So like, we could make this the next big thing. I don't see anything more than really just because it's so cold out that we could do much with. But, but that would also give you a lot of adequate time to really plan and, out, yeah. and make sure that everyone who was willing to participate in civil disobedience knew that they were supported and knew exactly why they were going to do it. Yeah, I think that there's plenty of planning space at this point. <laughs> right, and it sounds like, uh, especially a 420 uh, protest, the cops know what's up. Like, yeah. I mean, you're not going to surprise them or anything. So I would, I would hope... Um, Someone would be interested in having a discussion with the people who arrest people. The, I don't know what do they have police here or are they? Yeah, just, there's like three police forces actually in the town of Durham. That okay. Have, yeah, that have like <laughs> rain only like <laughs> first and students. Okay, so the cost. Someone have a talk with the costumed men. Um, uh, I urge you to like each one of. You who intends on participating in civil disobedience, because it worked out really well when I asked the lady not to touch me. And I think it could work for you too, like, why, why not? Um, because, like, I don't know, I don't want to bore you with going through the video a bunch of times, but you can see on her face that she's like, have, has this like moral issue, like, I don't, I don't know what to do. I've just told this kid I wouldn't touch him, and now I'm supposed to. 
And it wasn't until another lady who hadn't made that agreement with me came over and arrested me that the other one came. So as many discussions as you can have with these people, because they're going to agree. Yeah. They're not going to be like, oh no, like I'm totally going to aggress against you no matter what. It's like, they're, you got, you got, looks like something's on your mind. Oh yeah, I was just going to say too, another thing about that is that uh, Keen Police are used to being on YouTube a lot as well. So even in that instance, that's the first time they've used women. And it was purposeful that they were using women because it didn't look as threatening. Mm. So the civil disobedience is definitely gaining ground in Keen. So. Yeah, um, there, are, there are clues that, that tell us that it's working. Um, like the first time I was arrested, it was two guys. And then the second time, it was just one guy. And then the second time it was two ladies. And so it's, it's I feel like it's, it's getting less and less threatening um, seeming, especially for, for video. So they're trying to play that game too, uh, of like, we're gonna be the good guys on camera. Um, but I think you know how it'll actually play out. Um, I, I feel like I'm missing something huge, but, um, you said there was a civil disobedience plan for 420. Um, are there like plans in, in the works of people have like a, a sheet you can fill out at normal? Does anyone um, have a sheet for if I get arrested? Like I've I got a buddy system. I have some of those. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would definitely be open to like, yeah. incorporating that or if it's going to be a big deal. We could also talk about um, we've talked about in the past how to nonviolently resist arrest. Yeah. Um, and how to talk your way out of um, counter protesters um, and possible police officers. Yeah, we we tried that a uh, fair amount too. We also like to just kind of play their game a bit too to kind of almost find a common ground with them. Like we always apply for a permit. Anytime mm -hmm. that we're outside, because you have to have a permit no to have a gathering that. out on the lawn. Okay. Which is like total bullshit. Yeah, how like, do you feel about that? Total bullshit. Like, completely, like, you need to have a permit to gather. Like, sorry, isn't that my First Amendment right? Isn't that what you're paying tuition? Yeah, isn't that why I pay tuition so I can use this public space? But I regardless, yeah. we, we, you know, play by their rules. We always apply. We always do that game so that, you know, when they do come and they're like, you're not allowed to be there and you're doing these illegal things, we can be like, here's our permit. You said we could be here. So it's kind of, you know, we've kind of tried that route to be more of like, you know, we're on your team, we're playing by the rules that you set for us, please leave us alone. Yeah. And we do a lot of, of like training on how to talk to a police officer, mm -hmm. how to like articulate your rights, avoid a search, those sorts of things oh, to okay. kind of, yeah, to help with that sort of stuff. But again, I mean, if you're openly consuming and they see you doing that, talking your way out of a search really isn't going to be too much of well, it, it depends. So it, it sounds like there's civdis in two different contexts here. There's like civdis in the context of what you would be doing with normal the group here on campus. But there's also the civdis that you might be interested in doing on your in your own life, like when you're out of college or whatever. Um, so I, I recommend you have your own personal. If I get arrested, and have a buddy in your life. Um, <coughs> has the, the key or that information. Um, and also, when if you're getting, if it comes to the point where you're getting arrested, um, asking questions is good. Um, if you're watching the video later, seeing someone curse off a cop or trying to assert their rights sometimes looks, um, it, it looks like the cop needed to be yeah. suppressing them. Like if you come off aggressive. Right. They're going to want to take control of that situation. Yeah, That's so what they're trained to do. You an, know? an example of what I've done wrong in the past is when I was getting arrested for having the dance party, the, the cop people, like threw me to the ground, and I had been quiet and like <clears throat> conversational up until that point, and then when he threw me, I was like screaming and saying, like, use more force. I got like ridiculous, and it looked awful. But I felt like I was doing the I was like explaining to him with the, the right amount of passion, like, you're doing something wrong right now. <laughs> like, this is wrong. But on camera, it looked like if if I didn't know me, I'd be like, alright, maybe that cop like needed to control that situation. That kid looks a little like not so crazy. But if I was saying like, 
why are you doing this? Or I could have been the same volume, but if I was asking questions, the, the viewer uh, will certainly have a, a different perspective on what you're doing. So like, why are you doing this? And I like to keep it as simple as possible. I think it's really fun to act socially inept and like, um, it's just slow um, when around cops because it forces them to get to the principle of like what they're doing. Like, why are you putting your hands on me? It's like a very direct question. And it's like, how, how are you gonna respond to that? It's like, you're doing something illegal, <laughs> illegal. what does that mean? Like, like well, there's this state of New Hampshire and we have laws and there are rules that you live by. Well, what's the state? like? You know, just find your position in what is happening here. Because you definitely, if you haven't hurt anybody, you should not be touched like by a stranger that you don't want touching you. So get that stranger to explain what they're doing as much as possible on on camera. Because I, I think my ultimate goal with doing civil disobedience is to replace the state to to get the the people who aggress against peaceful people to stop and. I think they'll do that when they're like, gosh, every time I arrest someone, like I'm on camera, I'm on YouTube, and I get these calls to my office from strangers I don't even know telling me like, hey man, I saw that video and what you did was really wrong. And like, it just can't feel good to cash a paycheck knowing that you've hurt peaceful people and being reminded every day. Um, or, or people um, stopping, I, I saw the, the officer who maced me in the street and just like go up to him with a camera, hey, you remember you maced me the other day? Like, what was that about? And they, they, don't, they don't like when you, when you do that stuff, but it's definitely not illegal. So I, I just encourage everyone to assert your rights, live free, smoke joints out in, in the world, wherever you want to, because it's not hurting anybody. And like, when you have the courage to do it, it's going to ignite the fire for a, a hundred other people who are like, man, I was just waiting for someone to spark up. Like, finally, I, I feel safe here because I'm now that there are two of us, I'm not going to get a, arrested or it's less likely. Stuff like that. Um, yeah. we, we smoked usually in, in the park at 420 and there's some solidarity in the fact that everyone's doing it at the same time that, you know, it's less less likely for one cop who's pulling up to the park to see 20 people smoking pot. He's like, mm, I'm not really prepared to arrest 20 people. Um, um, you know what I mean? You might want to be aware that in many states it is illegal to videotape a police officer. It's also, not in New Hampshire. I, I'm just saying that for folks that maybe aren't always in New Hampshire, in a lot of places that is illegal, so you definitely want to check that first or um, be prepared to hide your camera if you're willing to do that. Um, but I had a question for you. When you post these videos on YouTube and you have these police officers um, posted, do you have their badge number and their office phone number also posted in a comment below your video? Because that'd be a really great way for people to call the police officers that are arrested you directly and ask them these questions. Right, um, so I've done that. I haven't done that with this video only because there were so many videos that were posted mm -hmm. online. I didn't have a camera that day. I was going to work actually. Mm -hmm. it was, like smoking up a little before work, just enjoying that. Um, but this was posted by someone else. I recommend posting as much info about these um, thugs as, as possible because the more they're called out on it, especially by peaceful people, like they get, police are used to angry, violent, like drunk people basically. And I think they feel like they're doing the right thing when they're interacting with crazy people. And so when you don't play into that role of like the, the people that they want to deal with, um, they're not interested in having an interaction. Uh, but I'm speaking in generalizations, forgive me. What's up? Uh, but sort of going off on that, I, I think one thing that, that I try to make clear, at least when, when I uh, practice civil disobedience, is even if the, the end goal is to call law enforcement out, I think it's important to make a distinction that uh, you're allowing them to effectively call themselves out. And I, I think if the activist goes into it with you know, that aggressive mentality of I'm going to call you out, um, in, in hindsight, looking back on it, like, as you said, it, it can be counterproductive. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think, um, and, and it's tough, especially when you know, someone throws you down, someone with a gun is in your face. Um, I, I think it, it takes a little bit of sort of 
either premeditation or being able to calm yourself down in the moment um, and understand that you know although this is you know this is affecting you directly right now you know because you're filming it because you're putting it out for people to see and draw their own conclusions after the fact um, it ultimately is sort of bigger than that you know and, and I, I know from from my personal experience you know in the moment it's it's your heart starts going right. and it's and it's tough um, but I think you really got to be able to sort of ground yourself in the moment and, and go, okay, you know, this is this is bigger than me now because effectively it's not. It's not about me and this cop. It's about a statement I'm trying to make, and I'm trying to kind of get the cop to make a statement himself as opposed to coming out of me. Man, beautifully said. Thank you, thanks a lot for, for sharing that. You said you've participated in some civil bits. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tell your story. You want to share? Yeah, uh, last or actually this spring, uh, the, the vice president came um, to campus. Um, in this building, coincidentally, the day, was it the day after or the day after? The day before. The day before um, the president announced that he would be running for re-election. And he officially came to speak on sexual assault. Um, we had some objections, not on the sexual assault message, but the interesting timing of his visit. Um, they, the, the school didn't allow us to stage any kind of protest um, in the building uh, the day of the event. So we... So because he was visiting, it was yes. like a special... Yeah, they, they locked it all down. Because normally there's information tables down there that student organizations are welcome to use. It's and true. we had booked one for that day, actually. So we were going to have a Libya rally, because they had just gone into Libya, and the vice president was here. And they said, absolutely Wait, not. Are you, what are you talking about, Joe Biden? Or yes. the yes. vice president yes. of this college? Oh, oh no, vice Joe president. Biden. Whoa! Yeah. And there was just like, <laughs> snipers on the roof. Like, yeah, that was everyone in the building next door had to put their blinds down. Like, the town was on lockdown because Joe Biden was coming in. So we, we basically, in a separate room that was completely separate from the actual protest, um, before any security checkpoint, um, we sort of did, like, uh, a flash protest, I guess you call it. Um, and it didn't last too long. And um, basically, I, I got up on the, on the stage of, of the sort of student center dining area. and Where they were projecting Joe behind it. And, and read two quotes, one from Joe Biden, one from Barack Obama, both from before the election of 2008, basically saying, you know, if, if the uh, president unilaterally authorizes a military action when there's no imminent threat involved, that should be an impeachable offense. There's no constitutional grounds for that. Read the quote, take off the stage, um, and you know, they, the, the policeman definitely got a little handsy on the computer face. You, you, you want you, yeah, you, you want it, you want to yell back. Exactly. Yes. Are you, you saying words? Yes. Yeah. The, the beautiful thing too, the second time that you were escorted out of the building, um, John Jones, the man who's recording it, uh, the policeman took his phone away, and John immediately, I just got assaulted by a cop. I just got assaulted. He just took my phone. The policeman just assaulted me and stole my phone. So all that like verbal recording, gave it, there, like, <laughs> gave it right back yeah. as soon as. This man stole my phone and assaulted me right in his hand. But, but I, wow. I guess the, the ultimate point That's I'm trying great. to get at is, in the moment, I would have loved to have yelled horrible things at the cop and spat in his face and gotten right back at him. In hindsight, looking back at the video, I'm extremely glad that I didn't because I think ultimately it gave what I was trying to make a lot more power. It looked great. It it if, yeah. I, if I had gone down to his level, I, I, it would have just turned into a pissing match and, and nobody wins. And that's, um, um, yeah.